let's talk about God and politics. Now, some people see government as a necessary evil. They think, yeah, we need government because otherwise we'd have anarchy and that's really bad. But they want to keep government as small as possible because power corrupts or they have more faith in people than in the government. On the other side are a lot of people who say, you know, if government just had the money and the power and the opportunity and you got the right politicians in place, then the government could bring a lot of good social change to the world. Now, chances are you fall in between those two positions. But have you ever asked yourself, what does God think about politics? What does God think about government? Because the Bible has some really interesting things to say about government, and especially your role as it relates to your government. Let's take a look. Respecting the government honors God. Everyone complains about the government, and with good reason. But the Bible says that along with your complaints should be a certain level of respect that you have for the government, and with good reason. Everyone must submit to governing authorities, for all authority comes from God, and those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and they will be punished. Many Americans like to question authority, and that's not bad, but you know, the Bible says that God has given us government, that's his institution, and we have a responsibility to obey the law. In verse seven, it says that we have to pay our taxes. And so as long as a law doesn't violate God's law, we have to obey it, and we even have to submit to our government. The Bible also teaches, live for the good of your community. Over the years, a lot of Christians have sort of acted like this earth doesn't matter. Like, hey, I'm going to die and go to heaven, or God's going to judge this world and burn it up, so what does it really matter? But that's not God's point of view. You see, in the Old Testament, God's people, the Jewish people, they lived in exile. That means they lived in a land that was not their own, and God sent them a letter, and look at what he said. And work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I sent you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, for its welfare will determine your welfare. This means that God places us in a city or a town for the good of that city, for the good of that community, so that by doing good in your community, you're going to bring honor and glory to God. I mean, what would happen if your church just disappeared from your town or your city? Would your city notice? Would your town notice? And so ask yourself, how do I promote the good of my community to the glory of God? How does our small group promote the good, live for the good of our community? How does our church do that? Because that's a responsibility that God has given us. Also, we're told to pray for the leaders you like and don't like. God gives us a really simple command, but it's really hard to follow. And in 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 2, he teaches us to pray for everybody, especially kings and those who have authority over us. Now, for the first Christians, this had to be shocking. This meant that they had to pray for the Roman emperor. They lived under the Roman empire. This is not a good guy. And yet God says, pray for him. And so you and I, we have a responsibility to pray for every leader, every politician, every governor, every mayor over us, whether we voted for them or not. And so I'd encourage you to take some time at the end of your small group to pray for your leaders. Pray for them by name and don't pray that like they would just get kicked out of office. Pray for their good and that they would uphold justice where you live. Finally, live out your real citizenship. You know, a lot of Christians are so earthly minded, but I heard one Bible teacher say, the kingdom of God isn't going to arrive on Air Force One. And that's so true, but a lot of Christians have made a politician or a political party or a subgroup of a political party into their savior. And they've put all their hope in that person or that group. But the Bible makes it clear that there's only one savior and his name is Jesus Christ. But we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our savior. No matter what happens in an election, Christians should never freak out because God is in control. God is in charge, whether you live in a democracy or whether you live under a totalitarian regime. God is in control. And so, yeah, political parties, political leaders, they can do some good. They can bring some good to our communities, but they can't deal with the biggest problem, which is the human heart, the sin of the human heart. Only Jesus can deal with our sin through his death and through his resurrection. And so our ultimate hope is not as a citizen of the country you live in right now. Your ultimate hope is in Jesus Christ. And so as Christians, never get so invested in this world that you freak out when your political party doesn't win the day. But if you think rightly about God, if you think rightly about government, you can be used by God to greatly bless your world and maybe even do so when it comes to politics.